Welcome, ladies and gents. Chris Andre here. You can find me at Bet Boxing on Twitter for boxing related tweets, or of course, you can subscribe to the channel. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk about Lyndon Arthur and Anthony Yard. Highly anticipated rematch. It's highly anticipated for me, too, because uh, not only for what's going to occur in the ring, but this particular rivalry has a special place in my mind. You know, it conjures up some happy memories. At the time of the first fight, I had what, five, six hundred subscribers i was getting anywhere between 100 and 300 views 400 views if i was lucky it was a very small channel the camera was terrible it was just shocking right and uh hatman very very graciously decided that he was going to start shouting me out and he said that you know everyone if you haven't followed chris andre what are you waiting for fantastic and alice is one of the best boxing analysts you will ever come across and i, I was so chuffed it was out of the blue i wasn't expecting anything like that i wasn't you know, Hatman wasn't a person I was talking to regularly at that time. I wasn't in his Discord server or anything like that. So it came way out of the blue. And, you know, in the past, I told a lot of people about Hatman's channels, family, friends of mine. So I hadn't mentioned it to any of them. I just let them find out on their own. And I started getting all these texts. Oh, my word, have you seen Hatman's latest video? You're going to get gassed. People just sending me links and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a lovely moment. I'm so grateful to Hatman for his selflessness. And the channel's grown massively, obviously, since then. And, you know, since then, it's not just that, man. I owe gratitude to, you know, people like G-Man Boxing, all the channels that I've appeared on, um, Punch Perfect Boxing, Love Boxing TV, Ringside Fracas. Um, you know, all you guys that have been there shouting out the channel, leaving comments down below, sharing the, the channel um, and the videos. I am so, so grateful to each and every one of you guys. Anyway, enough of the sentimental stuff. Let's talk about the nitty gritty of this particular fight. The first fight was cagey. Um, a lot of it was down to Anthony Yard trying to be too perfect, I felt. And he was struggling really to close the range consistently. Now, I did think that it was a very close fight, probably a draw. But if either one was going to nick it, I thought it was Anthony Yard. I thought that early in the fight, Anthony Yard was doing a lot of things that people weren't giving him credit for. He was landing shots to the body from range. And he wasn't getting his face pummeled off with a jab. He was getting caught sporadically with some good jabs. But he also landed some good shots to the body. I did a video in the past as well, whereby I, st I looked at one particular round that everybody made out was a clear Lyndon Arthur round. And you saw that actually Anthony Yard outlanded him if you're looking at the body shots in that particular round. And he's the one that landed a significant shot in that round. So there were rounds that were going to Arthur early on that I felt were actually Anthony Yard's round. But it was a close fight. And I can understand that it could go either way. When he started to throw caution to the wind later on in the fight in the last three rounds and he started to walk into range more quickly he started to have a lot more success he had taken away Lyndon Arthur's right hand prior to that and Lyndon Arthur had said in the corner to Pat Barrett his trainer I can't land the right hand and Pat Barrett said you can't land it but you're not throwing it son you've got to throw it sort of thing to you know to be able to land it at no point did Lyndon Arthur say no no you don't understand I've hurt it I can't throw it he's saying I can't land it not I can't throw it so I thought that Anthony Yard, I, I agreed with his interpretation, he took the right hand away. And one of the reasons he took the right hand away is because of that herky-jerky style. By maintaining that range and threatening to come in, he was always, you know, at range, just outside of range with that right hand. And, and Lyndon Arthur would have had to have really rotated and turned with that right hand. And when he did on multiple occasions, Anthony Yard would slip it and then counter him. Round four, I felt, was a really good round for Anthony Yard. The second round as well, which was given, I think, to Lyndon Arthur, I felt that belong to Anthony Yard. So I thought that he had a lot more success early on than people were giving him credit for, but they were close rounds. One of the reasons he had a lot more success when he was forcing Lyndon Arthur back is because Lyndon Arthur, although he's got a terrific jab, he does like to put his weight on his front foot to deliver that jab. So what was happening is when he was moving in at a slow tempo, trying to lure Arthur into making a move, you know, trying to draw him, draw a jab out or draw a right hand out, Lyndon Arthur's stepping back at quite a comfortable pace. From that moment forth, when Anthony Yard's trying to jump in from range, the majority of the times, Lyndon Arthur was able to just quickly step back. He's got good distance control. And so he was messing with the range and Anthony Yard was struggling with that. But there were certain areas where Anthony Yard had a lot more success, certain things he would do, and I'd like to see him do more of them. First and foremost, he had a lot of success when he was cut throwing, he was, he was changing the height dynamic, and when he'd be low and throw an up jab, or he'd be low and then lead with a right hand over the top, he'd catch Lyndon Arthur out. 
one of the reasons, there's a couple of different reasons, he has two types of guards, or he had two types of guards in that particular fight. One of them is that he has his left hand quite low, and he shoots it from low, and that will, you know, it comes out of your, your line of sight, and so it can stun you sort of thing. So it, one of the reasons that he's got such a sudden jab, Lyndon Arthur, is because of that. The other method is a traditional high guard. When he had the high guard, the up jab through, from a low position, through the middle of the guard, was finding a home for for Anthony Yard. And when he was low as well, he could then throw a right hand down to the body. And so a lot of the assault would be, is it coming to the body or is it coming upstairs? At one point, he lowered his hands. This was in the fourth, I think, as though he was going to throw a jab to the body. Lyndon Arthur reacted and he actually came with a right hand over the top. Great misdirection from Yard and he landed the right hand pretty flush. Um, so I'd like to see him do a lot more of that. Change the height dynamic, but come in lower. He was constantly going up and down in the first fight, side to side, I'd, I'd want to see him come in a little bit lower, generally speaking. Make, because he puts that weight on the on the, that lead foot to throw the jab, make him lean a little bit more forward over it to reach you, you know, to, to reach down on you. And that will mean that he's setting his feet a lot more. The other thing that he did that had success in those last three rounds, 10, 11, and 12, there was this consistent forward momentum with his feet. Now, prior to that, like I said, he'd taken away the right hand moving forward consistently meant that he was going to be hit with a few more right hands it's one thing to take away the right hand when you're cautious he's now throwing more cautious to the caution to the wind but you could see anthony yard's got a great chin and when the right hand would be thrown a lot of the times it would come off the shoulder he turned to the side and it would just hit off the shoulder other times when it would land he had the quality of the chin which would enable him to just throw back immediately well by throwing back immediately what happened is because lyndon arthur like i said would plant his feet and rotate he's not then escaping as quickly they start to enter an exchange and when they're punching with each other anthony yard is the guy that has the advantage not only is anthony yard got faster uh more powerful hands he's also got the shorter power so what happens is when you saw cambosos against lopez the other day for instance when they were in the pocket exchanging and and cambosos was letting go of his hands with him you could see that cambosos had the faster hands but lopez the bigger puncher so Cambosos might land two or three shots before Lopez lands one or maybe two. And over the course of those exchanges, if Lopez isn't landing flush, he's getting outworked, right? So it, there's an interesting dynamic there. Whereas in this particular case, Anthony Yard has both the shorter power, so he doesn't... So for for instance, the, the uppercut of Lyndon Arthur, you know, there's quite a, a, a big arc for the delivery. Same with the, the close hooking. Anthony Yard is shorter, so not only does it get from point A to B faster, it's a harder punch. Now, if they're both to shoot a jab, a long jab, Lyndon Arthur's hands are faster. Okay, so when I'm talking about hand speed, by the way, I wasn't talking about whose hands move more quickly. I'm talking about what gets from A to B quickest. So Anthony Yard, unlike the situation with Lopez and Cambosos, Yard and Arthur, if they're exchanging together on the inside, it's Yard that has the significant advantage. So by forcing Arthur backwards quickly, Arthur's got a dilemma because he wants to put his weight on that lead foot. Does he lead his weight on his lead foot? If so, he's then going to throw a jab, possibly a right hand behind it. He's going to be forced into fire exchanges, firefights, even if it means he does land something as yards on the way in. Or does he continue to move backwards as he was in the last three rounds, struggling to set his feet to be able to use that jab? Now, in the 11th round, he would take a quick hop step back and then throw the jab. That first phase of attack is quite good at. It's the second phase. It's if that first jab gets dodged or if Anthony Yard has a high guard that hits him and he walks through anyway, that's when Lyndon Arthur then starts to move more frenetically backwards and struggles to plant his feet. Lyndon Arthur could be forced into exchanges that he doesn't want to be in. The problem for Arthur, for a Yard, like I said, is he will probably have to eat a lot more straight right hands. You don't really want to be doing that because although Arthur isn't a monster puncher, there's enough there to keep you honest, and he can knock you out. He, you know, he's, he's got enough power there whereby if you're walking onto a shot and magnifying the power, you could be in serious trouble. The other problem that Anthony Yard has is a stamina issue. He's this big muscular guy, a lot of lactic acid builds up in those muscles when he lets his hands go. Round four was an excellent round for Anthony Yard in the first fight, but round five, Lyndon Arthur started to up the tempo. He was making him work, pushing that jab out when maybe Anthony Yard wanted to take a break, right? In fact, like I said, in the fourth round, although it was a very good round for him, with 30 seconds left to go, he did take a break before that last right hand on the bell. He started to go for a walk. He needs that. 
Lyndon Arthur can't allow him to have that. Be more consistent with using the jab. Up the volume of the jab, but you cannot afford to make it lazy. Still use a lot of feints, make it unpredictable, vary its height. Don't always aim for the head, aim for the chest a lot. Aiming to the chest will stop him with that entry point. Whereas if you aim to the head, he can come underneath it or slip to the side more easily and jump in. Anthony Yard had a lot of success when he was actually slipping inside towards the right hand. Later on in the fight, Lyndon Arthur tried to counter that with uppercuts and it didn't really work. Um, it wasn't that effective for Anthony, for, for Lyndon Arthur. He would still be getting caught with shots from Anthony Yard. So you want Yard to force him into that decision. But by the same token, if you're in Lyndon Arthur's team, you also want him to be able to dictate the entry point by aiming the shot either lower sometimes, sometimes to the head, sometimes lower though, make it unpredictable so that there's no pattern. If there's no pattern that's unpredictable, it's harder to read in order to slip and then come inside. So there are ways in which both of these two guys can have success. Yard has to be doubling up the jab when he's throwing it from a straight sort of position to close the range. If he wants to fight a more raiding style, you know, when I had this discussion with Hatman the first time around, um, when he first started, like I said, being very selfless and bigging up my channel, um, I suggested that I'd like to see Anthony Yard develop more of a raiding style. He has that sort of athletic capability that David Hay had. And so I suggested perhaps Adam Booth could be a trainer. Hatman said he liked the idea. I wanted to sort of toy with the idea of Anthony Yard becoming a little bit more like David Hay because if he has got these stamina issues, David Hay had some too. Although pressure fighting, I do want to see some intelligent counter-punching pressure fighting from him, not necessarily against this particular opponent. And with an outright pressure fighter, not only you know, does it require a, a good engine because you're constantly sort of moving forward and letting go of your hands, you are going to take some punishment on your way in. Whereas with the David Hay-esque type approach, he'll be all the way on the outside. If he fights the way he fought against Value, for instance, he'll be making Lyndon Arthur try to reach to land shots. And from there, you know, you're fainting your way in. And from there, you're leading with these big, powerful shots. You're jumping inside, landing two or three shots, then getting outside. I don't think Anthony Yard can go pedal to the metal. Is that the phrase? Pedal to the metal? Yeah. <laughs> for 12 rounds. I don't think he has the stamina for it. So he's going to have to be intelligent about when to use the flurries of combinations and power punches. Lyndon Arthur, on the other hand, he will want to force Yard into a tempo. Keep that jab up, force Yard to work hard. If he can't get you out of there when he is working hard early, you consistently pump the jab after that and force him into a position where you're tiring him out. If he does become a sitting duck, throw that jab to the solar plexus a lot more, tire him out basically. How do I think the fight's going to go? I think Anthony Yard's going to win the fight. I think Anthony Yard is going to force Lyndon Arthur onto the back foot. I think he will struggle to be set in his feet to dictate with a jab as he was in the first fight. That's not to say he's not going to have some success with a jab. It's not to say that Anthony Yard's not going to walk into a few right hands. But I think it will be very uncomfortable um, for Lyndon Arthur trying to set his feet. Uh, and I think that Anthony Yard is going to get the job done. Maybe... Um, and Lyndon Arthur has the chin though because he did recover very quickly even after that 12th round when he was caught if he does have the chin and Anthony Yard is landing these flurries of shots and they're not affecting Lyndon Arthur or rather he's recovering from them don't be surprised if you start to see it become a very very difficult fight in the last few rounds for Anthony Yard nonetheless I do think he'll end up winning the fight I think he'll he'll end up landing some big flurries of shots let me know what you think guys how do you think this fight's going to go thanks for watching everyone take care and God bless